Yes, sir, we can see. Yes. Recursive trigger in Salesforce. First of all, what is recursive trigger? A recursive trigger is one that performs an action such as an update or insert, which invokes itself owing to say something like an update it performs. Simply we can say recursion is a process of executing the same task multiple times. There may be chances to hit governor limits with recursive trigger. Below example shows what is recursive trigger. The, uh, this type of large error will get through recursive trigger. Majority of the errors will be like cannot insert update activity entity and maximum hierarchy levels reached and maximum trigger depth exceeded. Maybe there will be more errors. I found these errors. How to avoid recursive trigger? To avoid recursive trigger, you can create a class with a static Boolean variable with the default value false. In the trigger, before executing your code, keep a check that the variable is false or not. Once you check the once you check, make the variable true. And mostly recursive triggers occurs on after update after update event there may be chance of before insert before update also but most majority of the recursive triggers occurs on after update and this is this is my example which i took for uh, on campaign record is created by whenever campaign record is created by user the trigger execute and then inserts another record of the same type which causes the trigger to execute again for this record this keeps repeating until the platform stops it things itself. As you can see by this screenshot, the platform tolerates up to eight levels before it stops. When we didn't use any static Boolean variable with the recursive helper class, typically you encounter this scenario when you have some kind of hierarchy relationship with your object, such as parent child relation, and you need to update parent records when child records are affected. And here we created a recursive check for the uh, recursive trigger ca campaign trigger class. Here I found the information in Google and I just keep here. That is nothing but use static variables to store information that is shared within the confines of the class. All instances of the same class share a, co share a single copy of the static variables. For example, all triggers that are swapped by the same transaction, one communicate with each other by viewing and updating static variables in a related class. A recursive trigger might use the value of a class variable to determine when to exit the recursion. And also recursive variables defined in a trigger don't retain their values between different trigger contests within the same transaction. For example, between before insert and after insert invocations, define the static variables in a class instead so that the trigger can access these class member variables and check their static values about how static will help in recursive trigger. And here, after we check the uh, recursive equal to false, with this approach in place, the recursion stops once the trigger is called a second time and it does not attempt to insert a third record. The result is for every one record, a second additional record is created and the recursion is avoided. It is not allowed to re recreate another one. After after using the recursion check, recursive check. This is I found additional information regarding recursive trigger. And here I found the warning. Any form of recursive coding is by definition complicated. As I found this illustrate the use of a static flag recording. If the trigger has previously been executed can be too simplified, simplistic for some use cases. If you don't fully consider your use cases. And the starting mean in Salesforce are per transaction. So the value will be truly only for the current transaction. It will be initialized to true for other transactions. Don't think of static in Java term where static values persist till the class is loaded into memory and the handle recursion. To add the recursion on a trigger, make sure you your trigger is getting executed only one time. You may encounter the error maximum trigger depth exceeded. There are many other errors also, as I shown in second slide. If the recursion is not handled well, you can use static Boolean variable in Apex class and check the variable in Apex trigger. If it's false, then execute your logic and make it true so that trigger cannot be executed again. And this is my recursive trigger and that's it. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So simple, if you, something is happening 
like uh, every time okay recursion is happening every time okay so how you can stop that uh, same transaction multiple times is if something is happening multiple times you can stop by using the static keyword so generally yeah. static variables will maintain state across the transaction so once you once you assign some value to the static variables okay it will be say it will be uh, maintain that state across the transaction so that you can check next time it that value is, uh, is false or true so that you can stop a recursive trigger simply we can say the answer for recursive trigger is this only sir in this start slide no sir you can use a boolean static variable yeah. yeah sir not only boolean static you. variables you can use other list uh, boolean list set to boolean anything you can take okay list of yeah, string sir. that one okay sure thank you sir thank you sir yeah,